In fact, at the Berlin Assembly, the power state instructed Sultan Abdul Hamid II to ensure the safety of Armenians from the Cherkes and Kurds when the Sultan himself was the main instigator of all anti-Armenian actions of Kurds and Cherkessia. The best evidence of this is that immediately after the Berlin Assembly in 1891, a cavalry force was created by this order, composed of Kurds and maintained at the expense of the Ottoman government, which was named after him, Hamidi. It consisted of 40 regiments and was not part of the Ottoman Empire system, but was maintained as an independent military unit located in the Armenian city of Yerzenga. The main purpose of Hamidi was, in fact, to carry out Armenian pogroms throughout the empire. It was during Abdul Hamid's period that the government started to practice cultural genocide. Moreover, if the tactic of physical extermination could be removed from time to time based on external conditions or other considerations, the stated cultural genocide did not stop against the Armenian people and continued for more than a hundred years. At the same time, the Sultan tried to strike directly at the Armenians living in the homeland, Western Armenia and Kilikia, creating unbearable conditions for their existence. Persecution of Armenian people, robbery, looting and violence against the civilian population are becoming common. A unique anti-Armenian regime is being created in all Armenian regions. The country is turning into a complete hell. Emil Dillon wrote about this, one of the greatest public speakers of the time. The first step in the direction of the implementation of the extermination programs was to regularly destroy the people. First of all, it was implemented with the harshest tax policy. It should be noted that exclusively were like backward plundering Kurdish tribes and, and fanatic Norcogosian tribes settled in the Armenian vilayets. On April 3, at the 55th session of the UN Human Rights Council, the resolution prevention of genocide presented by the Armenian was adopted by consensus. This was reported by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Based on the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, the resolution draws the attention of UN member states to the risk of this crime and the need to prevent them. In particular, such risks include the use of armed conflicts to commit genocide. The resolution identifies impunity as a significant risk factor for genocide, war crimes and crimes against humanity, emphasizing that it must be addressed through investigation, persecution and punishment. In this regard, the fact that the resolution specifically mentions the role of the International Court of Justice in matters of prevention and punishment of the crime of genocide is significant. The Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights is called upon to encourage the participation of both member states, Special Advisor on the Prevention of Genocide, Treaty Bodies, Special Procedures, Civil Society, National Human Rights Institutions, Academia and the private sector in the event. The Lemkin Genocide Prevention Institute warns of Baku's possible aggression against Armenia and calls on world leaders to prevent another humanitarian disaster. Armenian analysts believe that the West is trying to restrain Baku's ambitions towards Armenia. The institute statement says that the recent attacks in Sunik and Gerar Kunik regions indicate a clear threat to Armenian sovereignty. We previously published similar warnings on September 19, 2023, regarding the already occupied and depopulated Artsakh Republic by Baku. According to the Institute, Baku follows the strategy of gradual occupation of the territory of Armenia. At the moment, he is trying to take control of eight more villages. The Institute compared the policy of Baku, which controls the strategic points of Armenia, with the policy of Israel in Palestine. Despite the alarming situation in Aleppo, Armenians of Aleppo have fulfilled their spiritual duty. We learned about this from the Facebook page of Artsakhang Media. A liturgy was also held on the occasion of the Eastern Holiday in St. Hakob Church in Ramishli. The city of Ramishli is located in the northeast part of Syria near the border of occupied Western Armenia. The city of Ramishli has been relatively safe from the events taking place in Syria. A similar ceremony was also held in the Armenian churches of Damascus. <coughs> France is concerned about the incidents happened in the Armenian district of Jerusalem. This is stated in a post published on the microblog of General Consulate of France in Jerusalem. We call on the Israel authorities to refrain from any actions that question the status quo of Jerusalem, the post said. At around 11 o'clock on April 3, the Israel police started an illegal eviction from the co garden estate of the Armenian Patriarchate of Jerusalem, destroyed the property of the Armenian Patriarchate, 
state of Jerusalem and attack the clergy and local Armenians. As a result of the transaction, a worrying situation was created in the Armenian Patriarchate of Jerusalem, in connection with which the Catholics of all Armenians, Galagin II, had a telephone conversation with the Armenian Patriarch of Jerusalem, His Holiness Archbishop Nurhan Manukyan. <laughs> Journalist Alvard Grikoyan reported that 16 children from Artsakh became victims of military aggression against Artsakh. They died in the war of 2016, 2020, and 2023. Several dozen more children were injured. All this is recorded in details in many reports, a peace statements of Armenian human rights defenders addressed to the world community with attached facts and photos and videos. The first victim in every war is always the children. In April 2016, the first innocent victim of the Azerbaijan rockets fired at the school was 12-year-old Vagarsha Grikorian. In 2020, on the first day of the 44-day war, the first civilian victim, 8-year-old Victoria Gevorkian, became a child again. In the autumn war of 2023, the first victim of Azerbaijan aggression were the 10- and 8-year-old brothers, Mikhail and Nevel Ghazadian. This and many other children were killed or injured by enemy rocket fire on schools, kindergartens, and residential areas. Every 10-year-old children from Artsakh has the right to say that in his life, he saw free wars, went through a total blockade, underwent a brutal deportation, and miraculously survived the genocide. The world is indifferent to the war and the many innocent victims of Artsakh. It also turned out that no Geneva Convention applies to Turkish-Azerbaijan police and international structures prefer double standards. The world did not react in any way to the death of children. What can I say about the murdered women and people? Kagi Ginosian dream came true by his artist friends and students. The dance hall of Karin Ensemble was opened. The opening of the dance hall of the Garin traditional song dance group took place at the Children's and Youth Center of Art, Education and Culture, which is dedicated to the memory of Harutsun Stepanyan, who died in the 44-day war, who was one of the pillars of the Garin traditional song dance group. According to Ginosian's plan, he should have named this dance hall after Harutsun Stepanyan. Unfortunately, he couldn't. But today, we are proudly fulfilling his wish. The long-time director of this great cultural center, Samuel Baloyan, and the current worthy leader, Tigran Baloyan, who came forward to implement this beautiful program, deserve deep gratitude, said Bogosian Gagik. Ginoisian Gagik, daughter of Inar Ginoisian, a member of Guardian Ensemble, informed that her father, with great dedication, was to carry out capital repairs and to have a dance hall for everyone named after Harutsun Stepanyan. The opening ceremony of the dance hall was also attended by many young people who will continue the best traditions of Armenian dance art, which were founded by dedicated Armenians like Gagi Ginosian and Harutsun Stepanyan. <laughs>